and welcome, and on behalf of the School District of the City of York, I welcome all of you to the Hennepin K-8 School for the Mayor's State of the City Address. For almost three decades now, I've served as an educator in the school district, and if I've learned anything in all the years, uh, it is this. Success in education is very difficult, if not impossible, to accomplish alone. Just as it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to ensure that education is accessible, exemplary, and equitable for all students. That's why tonight I am uh, so honored and happy to have the mayor present her State of the City address here in the School District of the City of York. Mayor Bracey is passionately engaged in the education of her youngest constituents, the students here in the city. She recognizes that when our children succeed, then our city succeeds. Investment in our children today will result in productive and tax-paying adults in the future who will contribute towards making York a vibrant and attractive place to work and live and making York the city that we all believe it can become. Last year, the mayor graciously agreed to co-chair a committee of community folks like you charged with the task of finding new ways to support the school district of the city of York. Their work continues, and I'd like to thank uh, the mayor and the Community Action Committee for their commitment to the students of our school district. Thank you all again for coming uh, to this great event. I'm looking forward to hearing the mayor's message. And at this time, we will have the presentation of our colors from the William Penn uh, Senior High School JROTC Color Guard. Please stand and honor our nation's flag.
And now the City of York's Poet Laureate, Miss Christine Lincoln. You may be seated. Good evening. How to fall in love with a city. You can go green here, here where being struck by food is a walk in the park, where creek fires create communion between fire breathers and jugglers, passers-by and poe. We sit in summer encircled by the faces of friends and strangers as flames ignite a night sky and skim the surface of the Cadoras in this place where strangers can become friends more like family. Where at two o'clock in the morning, you can walk the avenues and streets empty with sleep, learning the secrets of a place. Midday, and you can meet John, a man named for a saint who roams homeless alongside his father and it is John's 40th birthday, and he is lonely, he says. All I want is a girlfriend, someone to share my life, and you feel your heart breaking just a little, so you let it. You let this place worm its way here to the bottom of your heart, the way small, burrowing things build a warren underground. You let this city live there. Let it take up residence. Curry the weight of it just beneath your ribcage. And even if you are thousands of miles away, if you hold still, you can hear the hum of here, where you were born or migrated 30 years ago, and still you are considered a visitor from out of town. This place where you have raised daughters into womanhood and sons into men, 
Here, where you have planted seeds and grown gardens, where you have buried your pets and stood beside the graves of your parents, this place that holds your hopes and your disappointments. We are rooted to this place we call home, bound here by more than walk-up apartments, front stoops, attics, and basements, more than leases and deeds, our hearts are here, our sacrifices and our struggle. But this is how you fall in love with a city. You care for its people, for a city is its people. A city is its children and disenchanted youth. It's powerful and it's poor, the dutiful and the difficult, the drunkards and the ones dealing drugs, the least and the unlovable. Where there is love, there is the power to change and make a difference. So give yourself to it. Give your whole self with hearts opened as wide as windows and doors on the first day of spring. And Market Street stands there in full bloom beautiful and fragrant, bursting with new life. And introducing Mayor C. Kim Bracey, please welcome up Mr. Lauren Crow, your YCEA Interim President and CEO. Thank you and good evening. <clears throat> it's a great honor to be here this evening to uh, greet this crowd and to introduce our friend, the Mayor. On November 3rd of 2009, Kim Bracey was elected the 24th mayor of the city of York and the first African American to hold that position. She has successfully uh, ran for re-election and is now serving in her seventh year uh, as mayor. As the city's chief executive officer, she's responsible for all aspects of the general management of the city, including the city's $98 million budget, the enforcement of all laws and ordinances, and of course, providing for the well-being of the 43,000 residents. Since taking office, she's fostered millions of dollars in redevelopment through public-private uh, partnerships, as well as numerous federal and state revitalization grants. She certainly has served tirelessly as an advocate on behalf of the city of York, um, not only locally, but at state and national levels as well bringing the city into national uh, recognition and the, the way in which we solve problems here. It's great to see so many con concerned citizens from throughout the county as well as the city. But certainly the problems that the city faces are shared by many, if not all of us. Things like municipal pension plan uh, funding, blighted properties, jobs, the list goes on. In many ways, Mayor Bracey serves as a pioneer on behalf of all of us, so that it's my hope that when we leave here tonight, we will all have a deeper appreciation of the issues that the city faces, but also leave with bright optimism that we're on the right track and that the lessons learned here will be transferable to other municipalities in our county. It's my great privilege and great honor to introduce the mayor of the city of York, C. Kim Bracey. Wow, good evening everyone. It is so good to see all of you. Thank you so very much. I can see some of your faces. Um, it's probably a good thing. It's good to see everyone now. 
Thank you to all of those who performed and uh, gave their renderings of the, poem, the poems before now. We appreciate all the talent that is in our community. Thank you, Dr. Holmes and the School District of the City of York. We appreciate you being our event hosts as well. York County Economic Alliance, this evening's sponsor, Lauren, thank you for that wonderful introduction. We also have some other, some other sponsors as well. Our presenting sponsor, the Gladfelder Insurance Agency, Gold Sponsors, our friends at Wellspin Health and York College of Pennsylvania, our silver sponsor, C.S. Davison, Community Courier, Ingo Printing and Publishing Company, and Penn National Insurance. Thank you all to all of our sponsors. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Congressman Perry, Governor Wolf, Representative Schreiber, County Commissioners, members of City Council, all elected officials, city directors, family, my mom, <laughs> hey mom, Friends, citizens, believers, and doers, again, good evening, great evening to you. One night a year, we pause to celebrate and honor our York and recommit ourselves to what she yet might be, a thriving urban community with equality, justice, and opportunity for all, a shiny city of work, learning, creating, and recreating. We sometimes forget how many friendships we have forged, and how many milestones we have reached. So tonight, we take a step back to celebrate you and to ponder our city of hope and dreams. Now the following are not just pretty words. Civilized dialogue is oxygen for the great American dialogue that spurs democracy to action. Bold public vetted visions are the trade winds of progress. They make the improbable possible. And we are the city that could, can, and will. Public words not only matter, they are the essence for galvanizing communities to greater heights. They are civic poetry in, in motion. If we do not strive for greatness, we fail our people and ourselves. As Babe Ruth said, don't let the fear of striking out hold you back. Another Bambino, you know, York High graduate and Arizona Cardinals coach Bruce Arian says, no risk it, no biscuit. No risk it, no biscuit indeed. It took eight years from President Kennedy's public vision of going to the moon and to the moon landing during the Nixon administration. It took about 10 years from when Mayor Robertson announced his dream of bringing professional baseball to York until opening day in 2007 during Mayor Brenner's tenure, when Brooks Robinson actually tossed the first pitch. Now the going to the moon and York baseball comparison may seem like an out of space sort of stretch, but planning for and building a baseball stadium seemed like going to the moon at times. At times, it seemed like we might be going to, in the opposite direction actually, to a much warmer destination. But let's stick with that moon imagery, shall we? 10 years in, Baseball has been a big step for York County. 225 new jobs, 343 breadsticks, by the way, and one giant leap for our county seat. Constructed debt-free with no cost to the county or city taxpayers, our stadium might be the only one of its kind in the nation, and this is huge. Baseball brings in nearly $180,000 in city, city school district, and county revenues each year. The revolution has raised over a million dollars for nonprofits, and its turnstiles welcome over 300,000 fans every season. Attractive, family-friendly, and well-lit, our stadium is, a, is an integrate partner in a neighborhood where new citizens have moved in to enjoy the amenities and even those fireworks. In fact, as you walk in Brooks Robinson Plaza for opening day tomorrow, take note of the intersection of North at North and North George Street and a considerable amount of investment in just that intersection alone. In fact, since the York Revolution's first season, we have experienced over $200 million in economic development throughout our city. $200 million in the past 10 years for a five square mile city. That's not too shabby, folks. Indeed. 
And I didn't mention, the Revs are two times Atlantic League champions, by the way. That's right. <laughs> okay, so I have a bit of a confession to make. Although I'm a Hillary Clinton delegate, sometimes I feel the berm. Not the burn, but the revolution's berm at People's Bank Stadium, the fan-friendly slope grass that wraps around the outfield where families can picnic and play while watching games. Do you ever feel it? Do you ever get out there and feel that? Building a baseball stadium was never just about baseball. It's always been about families, communities, and fellowship. It's also about faith, just as the game of baseball is. Building our stadium clicked something different inside us. It sparked a belief that we are the little city that could, can, and will. As a result, after the umpire's first yell, play ball, moonshots or cannon fireball shots from, from the stadium bounced the following inevitable wins. We developed the Northwest Triangle, boasting the new home of LSC Design and its 80 employees, and the 500 student York Academy International Baccalaureate School. We also are featuring in that area 29 luxury units construction at Keystone Color Works that's now underway with 50% pre-leased. Promises made, promises kept. To round out the triangle, our redevelop redevelopment authority is vetting four exciting proposals for the remaining land. For two administrations, we've stuck to the, our vision of market rate housing in the Triangle. Hats off to Interim Director Shabaski Buffalo and our volunteer member board, led by Chairman David Cross, for persisting on that vision. Thank you. <laughs> we've supported the revitalization of the central market, which one, which 128 years and counting is thriving with over 67 vendors. We secured funding for the roof and other improvements to Penn's Farmers Market, York County's oldest market, which celebrates its 150th birthday this year. Now we put on our collective heads and hats together to improve and assist the operations of our neighborhood markets to ensure it remains successful for another 150 years. We can and we will redevelop the Yorktown Hotel. A shout out to the good folks of the Alliance and to the hotel manager, Rick Cunningham, for sprucing up downtown's grand dame so she delights and entertains new generations. Spearheaded by the Royal Square Development Group, the redevelopment of the first block of West Market Street will feature 124 market rate apartments and a football field of first floor commercial space. Stay tuned. CEO Josh Hankey is hankering for a prominent deli to locate there too. Connecting our downtown to Old Town East, Royal Square proper continues to grow and paint a mosaic of vintage wares and clothes, mind-bending art, music and poetry, and art supplies and classes. As promised last year, new streetscaping and vintage lights now complement Royal Square and that whole the bohemian charm we have down there. Also, a former bar is being revitalized next to Glazen, a hip craft beer and donut shop. That combination is real. They, <laughs> offering my favorite, by the way, a maple glaze with bacon <clears throat> donut. And as advertised, the old Bond building now hosts weddings, receptions, and art exhibits. We can and we will make Salem Square a state-designated Elm Street neighborhood as well. <laughs> we want to build on that momentum of converting a former West Princess Street bar into a satellite library. A shout out to Ray Olas, an owner of Bev's Grocery in that area as well. Each day, Mr. Ray, an anchor area there, sweeps outside his bodega a neighborhood place like uh, many gyms and, and third places that we see throughout other neighborhoods. We are very proud of that and appreciate his work as well. Also emphasizing our neighborhoods, the York Rescue Mission led by Executive Director Matt Carey has taken my take two or take 10 on Tuesday litter cleanup effort to the nth degree. Mission parishioners don't just take 10 minutes on Tuesday, they take two hours, as in two hours each day, by the way, cleaning up the Wico neighborhood. 
And that's definitely cause for applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also emphasizing our neighborhoods after 10 years of your city government begging and the follow up that we've done, we are proud to announce our Corner Stores, our Corner Stones initiative, an exciting new program funded by the Department of Health, Preventive Health Services. Young people access food where it's convenient. Most people do. Our corner stores can be corner, convenient corner stores of nutrition. And healthy bodies make engaged young minds. As a pilot program, Corner Store Cornerstone will partner with neighborhood corner stores to provide micro grants to enhance fresh foods offerings. All of our people throughout the city of York deserve access to fresh foods. From eight urban gardens, thank you. From eight urban gardens to securing capital grants for Central Market and Farmers Market to our novel fresh foods and loan funds to Corner Store, we've grown bumper crops of support and access for all. Also emphasizing our neighborhoods in the months ahead, we will host a city hall for, for a day in varied neighborhoods so my directors and I can meet with our employers, our citizens where they live, work, and play. We can and we will bring a noodles and company along with a Chipotle to our city. And through, st <laughs> through state grants, we can and shall redevelop an, inv an inviting Heritage Rail Trail corridor between York College and downtown from Grantley to Market Street. We also will extend the rail trail from Philadelphia Street to George. This ambitious project will include vintage LED street lamps, greenways, and upgrades to Lafayette Plaza. A huge thank you to our Rail Trail Authority, our Public Works Director, Jim Gross, and Downtown Inc.'s Interim Director, Tim Miller. They exemplify collaboration. <laughs> Partnerships like theirs and persistence make the impossible possible. Thanks also to Jim Gross, don't know, there he is, I see you, for his 16 years of dedicated service to our city as the best dressed public works director ever. <laughs> he has worked for three very different mayors, y'all, and I'm gonna leave it right there. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, for everything. <laughs> We continue to develop the buzzing York Street campus of Think Loud development in United Fiber and Data, or UFD, a moonshot away from the stadium. After $20 million of work, this 50,000 square feet high nerve center will add 150 jobs and blitz bandwidth throughout the Northeast and cut Grammy caliber records in a state-of-the-art Think Loud stadium. Studio, excuse me. By 2017, look for robust bandwidth linking York, the political center of Pennsylvania, to the financial center of the world, New York. While adding jobs and creating a culture of high-tech proudness, this future-proof technology will enable all people to have high-speed Wi-Fi to link information, jobs, iPhones, and the future. For the record, by the way, the city, your city government was the first to endorse these hometown boys and their promise of high speed. Our native sons make good on their promise by the nanosecond. No risk it, no biscuit. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Police Chief Kelly and Fire Chief Michaels and our dedicated officers and firefighters are ready as ever to keep our people and property safe. They do that every day. Last year, our fire department, in partnership with the Red Cross, installed 627 new smoke detectors in one day in the Salem Square neighborhood. When I announced our goal of getting below 2,000 part one crimes, some thought I was a little crazy, crazy indeed. Today, with our neighborhood enforcement units and concerned citizens, we proved the critics wrong. Once again, we recorded a decrease in part one crimes, remaining below our ongoing go threshold of 2,000 crimes with a total of 1,744. One too many, but it is below our goal. 
These crimes are the most serious crimes recorded by the FBI, by the way. In 2015, we saw a 5.75% reduction from 2014. That's cause for applause, folks. In both 2015 and 2016, WellSpan has pledged a contribution of $500,000 annually for public safety. 50,000 of this goes to South George Street Community Policing and your college efforts. We announced last year that at a cost of $100,000, WellSpan will pay for body cameras for all city police officers. Promises made, promises kept. After the current 90-day pro pilot program, all city police officers will utilize body cameras this summer. That's cause for applause. I believe, and I know the chief does as well, body cameras are good for our officers and our community, our citizens. They record accurate evidence and encourage all of us, all of us to be on our best behavior. Hot off the iPass, our police department is connecting our people to raiseonline.com, so crimes are reported up to the minute by the type and location. When technology weds with informed citizenship, we are more aware and more vigilant in fighting crime. We also continue to offer a no questions gun retrieval program. If you know of a suspicious gun on your premises, bring it into police headquarters. No questions asked. We'll take it off the streets for good. One less gun in our community. And many of our families have suffered the terrible consequences of addiction. Unfortunately, not new to the streets of a, of a city, particularly New York City, but our Commonwealth faces a crisis of heroin and prescription drugs. Our county heroin task force has diligently brought our community, community together to combat abuse and overdose. Our city boasts free prescription drug drop-offs. We support Narcan and a prescription drug database. I scarcely think anyone here tonight has not been affected somehow by drug abuse and overdose. As such, I encourage all of you this evening to clean out those medicine cabinets, get rid, get rid of the prescription drugs that are no longer in use, and drop them off in our, where we have our drop-off points. Prescription drugs are a pathway to heroin, and we are all on the front lines of enforcement, and this is as simple as an effective step of just dropping them off. Further, we support state legislation to bring about statewide standards, regulations, and licensing of recovery homes. These homes provide an important service and there are many impeccable and altruistic operators that join with me in calling for a statewide standard that all recovery homes be held to. All of the technology, laws, and programs in the world cannot replace responsible citizenship. Community policing is more than a two-way street. Citizens, parents, and youth are essential for success. Responsibility starts at within and at home. Responsibility starts at the kitchen table. Responsibility grows in places of worship, and responsibility multiplies in our schools. Any democratic civilization of nobility and achievement requires responsibility. Yes, I know, you all have heard it. You've heard me scream this. Skeptics will say, it's all nice and good. You're speaking to the choir. Well, maybe I am, and maybe I am. But never, ever, ever underestimate the vocal range of a good choir. Choir is belted out to parishioners. Parishioners talk to neighbors. Neighbors talk to neighbors. Neighborhoods create a community. Our community can raise our children and work together. So we speak loudly and broadly to all. And hear me as well, poverty and challenges are not excuses for apathy and destruction. No way, no how, none. No government, no council can legislate self-responsibility and self-respect. Our parents and young people, your lives have purpose. Your lives have meanings. I believe in you and we need you. Great communities and civilizations summons goodness from within each of us. As citizens, businesses, association, institutions, and nonprofits, we are 
the white rose city, but not all of our flowers are white. May thousands of flowers radiate in perennial freedom and dignity. Black, brown, orange, yellow, gay, straight, white, we all shine when we unite in freedom's light. And at times like these, we all are princes and princesses rape bathing in purple rain. Our belief in America, content of our character and work ethic of strength transcends colors of skin and history sins. Speaking of diversity and homegrown talent, when we search for executives for our businesses and associations, we Yorkers have a penchant for national searches. I'm guilty too, and I've learned the hard way. More often than not, though, the rational search is right before our eyes. Tonight, we congratulate City Controller Robert Lambert for being named President and CEO of the York County Library Systems. <laughs> After 27 years of dedicated service to the library and to our York, Mr. Lambert is a worthy successor to longtime president Bill Shell, who served for 35 years. Apparently, you can only work at the library if you commit to three decades, I guess. But Mr. Lambert will be the only, will, uh, will be the only third director in the library's storied history. Congratulations, my dear friend. You deserve it. And we have several other community organizations and positions and government agencies evaluating leadership decisions. And I say we have the leaders here among us in York County. So let's spare the talent search and, and, and use the talent that we have right here. Save some money too. <laughs> Chief Recovery Officer, Dr. Carol Saylor and Dr. our Superintendent, Dr. Herrick Holmes, thank you again for your continued leadership, sir. We appreciate you. To all the teachers, staff, students, and school district, families, we got your back. And we believe in you. Keep the faith. Never, ever stop reading, striving, learning, and believing. We all exude Bearcat pride. Here are a few, yes, definitely. Here are a few encouraging updates. Student enrollment district-wide is up. College accepted letters are up. School days have been extended by 40 minutes. Credit rating has upgraded. Free pre-K is available to 50% of the district three and four year olds with a goal of 100% access. Our Auditor General D. Pasquale just announced that audit of the school district is a welcome step to integrate best practices to all to everything. So thank you again for everything you're doing there with the district, sir. <laughs> to all three post-secondary schools, you are appreciated and we love you too. Through college in the classroom, Hack York takes 35 William Penn students, seniors, under their wings each year to earn uh, college credits and one free semester of college. That's real. That's <laughs> Hack York and York College now offers dual enrollment, which makes it much easier for Hack students to transfer to York College with credits intact. Collaborations like these make us much stronger as a community and keep our homegrown talent on the right path to turning tassels on graduation day. A shout out for Penn State York's 90 years in our city and its $13.5 million expansion at the Rural Community Center. Kudos to your college for its contagious energy at the Center for Community Engagement and Market View Arts. I have a standing invitation to all three. Come on downtown anytime you want. We have the space, amenity, momentum, and we welcome all young people. An old Native American saying is, do not judge until you walk a mile in his moccasins. When we get off our high horses and walk a mile in his or her shoes, our optics are forever changed, for the better. When we appreciate the otherness of others and respect them for who they are, we stretch our capacities for empathy, imagination, and collaboration. 
Indeed, our people are our greatest assets. And when we work together, diversity is a major strength. Our similarities are stronger than our differences, and our people are precious. Together, we are one York, revolutionary and invincible. I am proud to have recruited CASA, which is, a Sp which is Spanish for home, to open an office in our city hall. Almost 30% of our population is Hispanic or Latino in York alone, York City alone. In a nation of immigrant dreamers, castigation and, and alienation are not effective. Mi America es su America, mi amigos. We, we must engage, we must engage and integrate our law-abiding immigrant peoples already here through job placement, English literacy training, and citizenship and legal services so they can become productive American citizens. And that is what CASA will offer. Thanks also to former Mayor Bill Althaus and other pioneers, our York is proud to have one of the first and most progressive human rights ordinances in the state. I applaud Governor Tom Wolf's executive order protecting all lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender state employees from discrimination from contractors. I also call on our General Assembly to pass the Pennsylvania Fairness Act, which would... <laughs> which would outlaw discrimination based on sexual orientation or identity. Let's give credit where credit is due to. I applaud the General Assembly for finally passing legislation enabling York County to boost its hotel tax to 5% <laughs> for much needed tourism dollars that remain here in York County for promotion and development of this important and strong industry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There is every reason that our, our county seat smack dab in the middle of a growing county can become a mid-Atlantic cultural heritage and recreation tourist epicenter. Cheers to the York Fair Board, Fair Board of Directors for transferring the old grain silo on Richland Avenue to our redevelopment authority, which actively seeks funds to demolish that blighted structure so that it can be developed. As we gaze into the future, please indulge me from my nudge pulpit. I never liked the phrase bully pulpit because who likes bullies anyway? But nudge pulpit works for me. It enables us to dream big and dare to be special. Every vision is ridiculous until it is realized. So instead of a parking lot where the grain silo sits, why not develop the area into a state-of-the-art hotel and convention complex and garage as part of a master plan to bring the entire York Fairgrounds into the 21st century? Okay, <laughs> no risk it, no biscuit. <laughs> All members of the York County Legislative Delegation voted for this tourism legislation, and I applaud them and Ann Druck and our County Visitors Bureau for never giving up. A shout out to York City State Representative Kevin Schreiber. Woo! <laughs> From education reform to fighting for economic and workforce development to helping our most vulnerable citizens, Kevin has been a stalwart in Harrisburg. Kevin and I recently met with the governor to present our York priority list. I have a hunch that we'll hear some exciting announcements or have some exciting announcements to make in the months ahead. But thank you, thank you, thank you for your leadership, Kevin. We mean, we mean a lot to you. <laughs> Through painful cuts, renegotiating union contracts and discipline spending, we not only held a line on municipal property taxes in 2013, in 2014, in 2015, that's right. And in 2016, we incrementally decreased our property taxes, okay? That's right. <laughs> the work to stabilize and reform our city's finances is full-time and year-round. It's not limited to a budget season. We work annually to make more out of less to educate all through our fiscal freedom campaign and to provide quality services. When 37% of the value of property is tax exempt, nothing is easy. Since I've taken office, we reduced our city workforce by a third, reduced officer overtime 
aggressively sought payments in lieu of taxes or pilots from nonprofits, established payment plans for those who owed on their sewer bill, restructured and lower retirement benefits, and finally now receive our city's fair share of the realty transfer tax. That's a mouthful, but calls for applause, because we're writing our financial ship, folks. I, think, I thank um, all of the members of city council who worked with us to leave no stone unturned. We are doing all that we can to write our financial ship together. Tonight, I reaffirmed my goal announced during the last two budget cycles to reduce our municipal property taxes by 15% over five years. We're sticking to it. On my watch, led by our business administrator, Michael Dowry, we are on our way, and we will get there. If our state would only meet us halfway <laughs> to help even the playing field with other municipalities, our York could and will flourish with a flood of new home ownership and investment, job creation, and confidence. We need meaningful reform from Harrisburg so Pennsylvania's 54 other underdog cities can lift ourselves up. Time, thank you somebody. <laughs> time and time again, we have asked for pension reform through House Bill 1581 which would be a long-term fiscal game changer, but by reining in pension costs for new hires. We've also pled for arbitration reform so arbiters can take into account a struggling municipality's ability to pay and taxpayers are given access to those closed door hearings and bargaining union negotiations. Finally, a consistent state budget that takes a large chunk out of school property tax is needed. Governor Wolf's presented budget, unfortunately, was not approved by the legislature. It would have been a huge, huge, huge shot in the arm for small cities like ours. It would have nearly wiped out school property taxes, which account for nearly 65% of a city taxpayer's total bill. We need that reform, sir. Heritage Trust President and CEO Joe Momert Trust staff and all board members, we salute you for your commitment to preserving our past. This up Sunday, May 1st, we celebrate 40 years of the Colonial Courthouse, a bold vision of the late Judge John Rawhauser Jr. I can't believe that courthouse is as young as I am. Okay, back to reality. As we celebrate its birthday and York's 275th birthday, let us commit to a world-class facility that compellingly tells our indelible and undeniable role in the creation of our nation. We are the home of the nation's first working constitution, the Article of Confederation. We are the home of the Treaty of Paris, a pivotal, pivotal pact needed to win the American Revolution. With dignity, technology, and flair, let us tell our full, fascinating story of the creation of a nation to new generations that yearn for discovery. Our forebearers, children, grandchildren, and nation deserves nothing less. Also, let's envision a wing of the creation of the Nation Center as a Stevens Leaders Wolf School for Public Policy, a place where students of politics and governance can hone their skill sets while absorbing leadership lessons of Civil War legislator Thaddeus Stevens and governors George Leader and Tom Wolfe, among countless others. After all, your college roots trace to Beaver Street, where young Thaddeus Stevens taught classics before becoming one of the most influential legislators in the General Assembly and Congress, fighting for public education and freedom. Let's view the Harris's Rail Trail Corridor, especially between King and Market, as an inviting, illuminated Freedom Way that welcomes bicyclists, walkers, college students, and tourists to our consolidated heritage exhibits at the steam plant. And as we think about natural or our natural assets that greet bicyclists and hikers outside the steam plant center, let's steam into history by linking the late Bill Simpson's passenger rail vision into downtown York. I recently spoke at the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland to honor the acquisition of a replica of the York, the pioneering award-winning 1831 locomotive invented and built by Yorker Phineas Davis. I, I was moved, folks. 
As we steam into history and salvage history, let's honor the intrepid Phineas with shiny year-round outdoor replicas of the York, our nation's first locomotive, and the Cadoras, America's first iron steamboat. Let's show new generations of designers, tech heads, and dreamers that for 275 years, we've unleashed creativity. A couple blocks from the steam plant sits a stately brick home of pioneering entrepreneur William C. Goodrich, who shuttled slaves on the Underground Railroad. To the best of our knowledge, this is the only authentic Underground Railroad structure in Pennsylvania still standing that was owned by an African American. Carol Kaufman and the Crispus Addicts partnering, uh, partnering with attorney Frank Countess have spearheaded efforts to open the Goodrich Freedom House. To all of those involved in this noble and overdue effort, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get it done. In ancient, ancient Athens, Greece, the birthplace of democracy, visionaries developed the Athenian Pledge, which recognized that good citizenship and responsibility are at the root of effective governance. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe you have you all have a first of its kind York pledge card. It might be in your bag, you might have got it separately. Kind of looks like that. I know it's a little dark, <laughs> but in honor of York Rotary Club, Martin Library, and Penn Park's 100 years, the pledge is exactly 100 words. I will recite some of it. Um, if you can see it, you can join me. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to the United States of America, Pennsylvania, and our York. I ask not what York can do for me, I ask what I can do for York. I strive to treat others as I wish to be treated. I work toward civility, peace, responsibility, truth, goodwill, civic virtue, justice, and equality. I summon goodness from within myself and greatness from partnerships. Education is our future. When we work together, diversity is a strength. York yields opportunity with revolutionary know-how. York unleashes creativity. York's best is yet to come. Thank you. Our York 275 years and counting, counting on all of us. So we have a couple birthdays to celebrate as well. Happy 250th birthday to the Friends Meeting House on West Philadelphia Street, one of our most beautiful and sacred places that continues to inspire, heal, and all. Happy 250th birthday to York Water Company. As we've learned from Flint, Michigan, nothing happens without quality water, substances of the Mother Earth. Happy 150th birthday to the Penn Street Farmer's Market, the oldest market in York County. Happy 100th birthday, York Rotary Club and Penn Park. Happy 40th birthday to the Colonial Courthouse. And happy birthday to Lady York on the Cadoras, 275 years young. That's right. <laughs> Fifty years ago, the General Marquis de Lafayette offered a famous toast of loyalty to the then in battle General George Washington in the Gates House here in our York. Some of you were lucky enough to receive a commemorative champagne glass this evening. If you have that, I would ask that you pull it out of your bag, kind of like the Oscars. We got a gift bag tonight and raise your commemorative champagne glass. A toast to Lady York on the Cadoras, our hostess the most, disarming instigator of hope, little city and big town all the same, quick to know our names, charmer of many shades, pulsing northern and southern veins, your retro chic unique, quick on your feet, replete with first and feats, unleashing creativity on storied street. Oh, grand dame of what stirs us, oh, seductress of fresh starts, our revolutionary sparks, 
freedom's lantern through the dark, ignite our yearning hearts to torchlight sparkling tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs> Toast number two. Keep them out. <laughs> our native son, Governor Tom Wolf, battles prostate cancer. Here's one for the fighters, survivors, and veterans of all stripes to all who suffer, but who answer the call of life and service. Here's to you. Cheers. And a final toast. Here's one for the quiet stoic ones who are the heart of our York. They avoid the limelight or who never get the proper recognition. They include a city workforce of 315 dedicated employees. They include over 100 volunteer members of city boards, authorities, and commissions, and neighborhood associations. They include pioneering citizens like Louis J. Appel Jr., Ray Crenshaw, Bonnie Grimes, whose graceful fingerprints of compassion and generosity shine all over our York. They include teachers, mentors, counselors, caregivers, and citizens like you who consistently give, care, and share when no one is looking. That is the definition of character. Friends, this love, this love straight from my heart, this love is for you. Cheers. Okay, I know your glasses seem to be a bit empty, but that's only because our cup runneth over with goodness and mercy. And for 275 years and for forever and tomorrow, our cups runneth over with goodwill and inspiration. May God bless you, the United States of America, Pennsylvania, and our York, and I thank each and every one of you for all that you do for our York. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you all. I have a couple more things real quick, though. It gives me great pleasure to present the Mayor's White Rose Hall of Fame Awards. As a York native and a proud graduate, graduate of William Penn Senior High School, or Bill Penn, or York High, or The High, um, I know of many gifted graduates and individuals who also call York High their alma mater. In fact, Dr. Holmes, I don't think I've been on this stage since I was in the band in junior high school. This is pretty cool. But over the years during our State of the City Address, we've taken time out of our address to recognize a few of these fellow accomplished Bearcats. This evening you have in your program three of them noted. The first one is Dr. Deborah McMillan. <laughs> Dr. McMillan has specialized in geriatric and family medicine for over 30 years, and she's affiliated with Wellspan York Hospital. Um, a little bit about her is included in the program. A couple of things I just wanted to point out. She is uh, strongly believes in community and in community service and strengthening our community and our young people. She has received numerous awards herself. She's the founder and coordinator of the African American Love Fest that celebrates, is celebrating 21 years of honoring community members. Dr. McMillan, if you would please join me up here, ma'am, so you can be recognized with your White Rose Award.
It reads, White Rose Hall of Fame Award presented by Mayor C. Kim Brazy, York, Pennsylvania, to Dr. Deborah McMillan for outstanding achievement, April 27, 2015. Thank you, ma'am, for all that you do. Thank you, Mayor Bracey, and all of you who have come tonight. It's an honor to be here, and I, um, I'm used to giving awards. I'm very not used to receiving too many, but I thank you for this opportunity. I have so many people to thank, and I thank, first of all, um, I thank God and the Lord Jesus Christ, for who is number one in my life, and I thank my husband, who is uh, tirelessly seeing after me in one way or another, and, we thank, and I thank my family, my daughters here today, all of those. I have friends, so many friends. I have our church family here who back me, and they uh, are very active in the community that we live in, and I call it our one square mile. We try to work in that community and do as much as we can, and um, I would say more, but I know there are others, and I, I just thank you so much. Thank you. Next is Detective First Class Jeffrey Spence. Detective Spence um, will tell anyone that he graduated from the best class of William Penn. I'm not sure what that's about, but he is a graduate as well as, uh, from William Penn and an Air Force veteran. Jeff has been a recipient of many uh, awards within his career, most recently the Mayor's Medal of Dist Distinction. He's admired for his ability to be empathetic and works tirelessly to represent crime victims and their family. At a time when um, police officers are, are not looked upon in high regard as they should be or respected, it was important to me to take the time out to say thank you to Jeff and all of his colleagues, number one, but to appreciate him as a fellow Bearcat and to thank him for the work that he does in our community. Detective Spence, are you here? Please come on up, sir. You gotta take that long stroll. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> That's beautiful. Are you sure you want me to do this again? Yeah. All right. Just don't say 85. I won't say 85. Um, Mr. Holmes. Thank you for what teachers and everybody in the York City School District has done for me and taught me. The lessons that I learned going to York High, Smith and McKinley have done me well in my life. I got the best education going to York High and I'm proud of all the people I see in this room that I went to school with and went before me. I'm so proud of you Bearcats. You guys are awesome. Right there, I see you guys. It's with little trepidation that I'm on this stage I told my girl Jen, as we were coming in here, when I went to Smith, I was wearing my little blue blazer and white geeky turtleneck, and uh, I was singing a boys' chorus. And this was hostile territory, because this was Hannah Penn. And they let us have it. So the last time I was on the stage, I got booed, so I apologize if I'm a little <laughs> nervous. But um, with that being said, Miss Lincoln, that poem that you read earlier, is beautiful. That sums up what, I'm, what it means to be from York. And I would love to have that framed right above my desk, in my house, wherever I go, because people always ask me, why do you come, why did you stay here? I couldn't have said it any better than that, right? This is where we're all from. This is what we believe in. And a lot of times, as a police officer, I won't lie to you. My chief has actually entrusted in me to put a unit together and the people that come and work with me are people that actually say, These, this is my town. They've adopted this is my town. And, I, and I've said that to Wes a lot of times. He's a great chief and he works for a great mayor. He's very innovative. 
but the police officers that are out, I, I don't really see any here right now, but I do have a plea for them. You have to want to serve and protect, and serve means I serve you. Wes Cayley, before he became, came up and before me, the best service we ever got and the most reward was coaching. We went out and it, it's more than mentoring. You give back to your community. You, you know, too many, like she said, too often the police now are looked upon as this, that, or whatever. But it's my honor and it's been my privilege for 27 years to serve my city. And for that, I thank every single one of you. Thank you. Awesome guy. Next, we will recognize Mr. Jeff Stapley, also a graduate of your time. <laughs> Jeff and I go way back. He's older than me. <laughs> Not that much. He was a drum major in the band when I was a band member as well. A graduate of William Penn, he teaches jazz studies at your college now and directs the jazz ensemble and groove ensemble. Jeff has been a music instructor at Lincoln Intermediate Unit number 12 for over 25 years. Jeff is the contemporary music director and pianist at Zion Lutheran Church of York, and many of us know of Jeff and the Jazz Vespers every Martin Luther King weekend, like clockwork. The snow, it doesn't matter. They're going to be there playing for the community in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. But when I first came into office, Kevin and I, met with Jeff at the Green Bean and asked him <laughs> and asked him what he considered doing a series for us, Jazz in the City. We felt the vibe that was happening in the city, bringing arts into the city. We needed this music vibe as well. Jeff said yes, and he still does it for us every <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Come on up here, Jeffrey Stabley, graduate of your academy. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the City of York. Uh, this means the world to me. I appreciate it. And what an honor it is to follow the two heroes that were up here before me. Thank you. <clears throat> my grandmother, my grandfather, my mother, my father, my sister, her husband, and her children, my wife and myself and my children all went to York High. So on behalf of four generations of Bearcats, I would like to thank the city teachers and all the staff that helped to ensure the success of my family. Thank you. <clears throat> I have to same, uh, shamelessly plug gigs while I'm here. That's what musicians do. Uh, I'm especially proud of the connection between jazz and York City. On first Friday from 5 to 7 at the Strand Studio, you can hear world-class jazz every first Friday at 5 to 7. Please join us. Uh, every third Thursday at the Holy Hound, another York City establishment, you can hear York High graduate Tim Warfield, who's one of the best players in the world. <laughs> York Fest this year is August 27th, and that will feature uh, some friends of mine as well as Extremity. Please join us for that. And that starts at 6 o'clock. And just while I have you all here, every second Saturday in January, at First Presbyterian Church, a city church, you can hear world-class musicians honoring Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. Thank you. We love the Bearcats, indeed. Thank you all so very much. I'm honored every year to be able to recognize Bearcats. That is it, folks. Thank you so very much again for being part of our evening. Our State of the City address will be online for your peruse as well. Thank you and have a good evening.